And we are live, and it's almost 8 o'clock, 7.57, and this is the 5 a.m. Mr. Strum Show. It is not 5 a.m. It is 7.57. It's later. I don't know why, but uh, hope you're doing well today. It's Tuesday. This is our 465th episode, and I was kind of debating when I was going to do a show today, but I like doing it. I don't know. You guys are my therapy. Let's put it that way. Um, or doing the show is my therapy. Um, I'm Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach, and we talk about Scrum and Agile in a practical and tactical way so we can bring value to the customer without working all that time, all the time, and have some time left over, as our mission statement says, for family and friends, and to have a little fun in work and at home, you know, so it's kind of things we did. So yesterday I released, it was later, my, you know, I thought I was going to do it, it was supposed to be, I don't know, but anyway, we put the Mentos uh, video out yesterday. I'm putting different versions up there, up there, and trying to space them out a little bit because apparently the algorithms don't like share things that if they're too close together and all kinds of things like that. So I'll put another little 15 second version of it out today, um, maybe around lunchtime or something. But what are we talking about? So that's the fun part, right? Doing little agile experiments. I thought my kids about next time what we might do on the next version of the sprint and expanding it and educating and learning together as we go, trying new things, going past what we can do. Uh, but what I want to talk about today, I want to talk about uh, uh, consistent improvement and webinars. I call them NARS, the NARS thing. Not so keen on the NARS. No, I don't know. We'll talk about that. So one webinar I went to yesterday, I went to a couple of webinars yesterday. Um, so I'm going they were okay, but wasn't that great. Um, some things I, I, I want to talk about what I like, don't like about webinars and, and get your opinions on them. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to make more interactive and more available for people to discuss stuff that are related to Agile and Scrum. Besides, you know, I try to do this 15 minutes, keep it nice and short and brief and talk about different aspects. Get your feedback from people who watch the show and figure out well, what we can do as a, a group. Okay. So one of the points of one of the webinars, can we get continuous improvement if the teams are continuously, are not continuously funded? Um, you know, what happens with the assembly and disassembly of teams? And that was the old, old mantra of, hey, we got a project, we put a team together, when the project's done, we disassemble the team. And the thought process was really interesting where, can we get continuous improvement? And it was, and I was thinking about stuff I've been coaching and working with some companies and the idea of changing teams out, changing people out is the incentive of the project or to get better people, right? If the, pro, if it's project centered and not better quality people, well, then you're not going to get consistent um, improvement, right? There's going to be some improvement, but it's not going to be radical improvement. Um, if your goal is to improve people, which then will produce better projects, that's that's the agile thinking uh, process. And I just wanted to share it with you all as you're thinking this. And I know some people don't have control over that and what it is. A lot of stuff that I've seen teams together, I mean, they're, they're together for a year or two or at least, you know, as, as, a, as a unit before people maybe get switched off or drop off or switch companies or something like that. But my, my thought is when we we're talking about, they were, here we're talking about funding and how it's better to fund teams as a whole and let and then they're more encouraged to improve. Otherwise, it's about producing a product all the time and it's not about producing a better, cheaper product. So there's a weighing how you want to do that. I'm going to think I'm going to talk about that more as we go and try to figure out, well, how do you do that in an organization that, that doesn't think that way, right? that they think more about producing the product for the customer, but it's not team oriented. And I will say it was interesting. I think, I think Gary V talked about your team first, then your, it goes team first, then customer, and then the, then the company and then you. Right. So it was kind of like in that order, my interpretation of what I heard. So don't hold me to it, but there is something to that. Get that team nice and solid. And they'll produce better product, right? They'll learn new things and they're going to adapt and they'll learn how to work together. As they say, Scrum is simple, but uh, kind of hard to implement. Uh, it's because people are working together. And the idea of people working together is very hard. Work, people are stubborn. 
people like to decide what they want to do. And getting them to work together can be difficult. But when you really do get them working together, nothing can stop those teams. I mean, look at some of the championship football teams and sports teams. When the teams are really working and gelling together and they know each other and what they're doing, they beat anybody. Even if they're not that great of a team, but if they work as a team, they usually win pretty well. So the question for you when you're doing this, are you product centered? Are you or or are you team improvement center, centered? Right, because the team improvement only happens if they're they're kind of together for a while, not for six months, but like for a year or so, and that's a difference in, in philosophy. So think about it, reflect on it. How do we get that improvement? That's where the benefits of the small improvement. You're not worried so much about the larger improvements. So so when you got an organization that tears people apart and the teams apart consistently. You're probably, and this is the practical side of Greg Master, is making those small improvements is all you're ever going to get. I'm just being practically honest with you. Um, unless the company brings in new software and then you got to train them, but you're going to get rid of people anyhow. Business doesn't want to train the people in the new software because they want them to produce stuff, and that takes away from that. Where if you're a long-term game, you can work it in over, over a long time and get it in there, and you don't care, right? It'll, it'll work out, and you'll actually make more money. Um, so that's something to think about long-term getting good quality improvement on the teams or short-term thinking product-based or project-based um, teams where you're not going to get that, that needle moving improvement on the team's productivity. So it's something to think about. And then webinars. Um, this is just my own pet thing. I'm trying to figure out how to build a more talking environment. And I went to two webinars yesterday I am not liking the Zoom webinar only because you can't see everybody. It's very anti-agile, but these are agile groups. I mean, I guess if you're getting a lot of people, you can do the webinar thing, but it, I don't get that interaction, especially with the new group. Maybe if the group has been around for a while and you have the webinar at work, it just kind of turned me off, to be honest with you. I'd rather do a regular Zoom call and have hundreds of people in the Zoom call than do a webinar thing where the, just the, the main couple characters talk. And um, to be honest with you, I went one of those, was a three-hour one yesterday. I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep for 15 minutes during the webinar because it was death by slide. There was some interaction, but it was very limited. You couldn't see who all the other people were. It was, it was it, it, I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be something better out there than a webinar. And then I went to another one where there was just me. It's like, hi, Greg. <laughs> and but I couldn't tell how many other people were out there because me as a participant couldn't see anybody else on the screen because it was blank and it wasn't that I don't know I don't I I, I don't think I'd like to do the webinar thing um, if I was doing a webinar I would do it really short and very short hello uh, Rita right Rita how are you doing good morning good afternoon depending where you're from and I'll say hello back. Hello, back. There you go. Pickle. Anyway, so that's what I got today. Feel free to message me on what you've seen in webinars. I would like to ask one question on this, and, I, and not the only people watch at this point in time are the people dedicated. Uh, Finland. Oh, Finland. Cool. So, do you do a lot? So, we got a, we got a Finland person from visit Finland. There you go, Finland. Awesome. Um, what format would you like, and what time would it be a good time to do interactive? I'm thinking in the morning or after or evening. After you know, pre work for my time or after work, um, Eastern Standard Time. I'm thinking. Uh, <sighs> I don't know, 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock for about a half hour. I think the hour-long programs are too too long. I'm thinking um, I'm thinking more like a um, lean coffee format where we talk about a couple ideas. We post some ideas. We vote on it. We talk about it, but only a half hour. Hour is too long. I think an hour is too long. I think in this day and age, we just want to get in, talk some things, exchange some things, have a cup of coffee, you know, and, and have that discussion for a little bit, a little chat, and then move on for the day and just go on to other things. 
just something to think about. Feel free to message me, comments on this video here on YouTube, comments in LinkedIn, that if you would be interested in doing some, such interchange, what time ranges are you, look, are you thinking about? Um, you can tell me what time zone you are, and I can always figure it out from there. And then how long, right? And what would you would it be of interest? So with that, the thumbs up. Thanks, Rita from uh, Finland for visiting. Ring a little bell, and you get notice when we put videos up there. I am going to put another fifteen second video up with the rocket, the uh, Coke. And everybody have a great day. Happy scrumming. Bye.